Hey everybody and welcome back to another video here at Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking it out. Hope everybody's doing well today. Today we're going to be talking about bird flu H5N1. Uh, and this video we're going to do a dedicated deep dive on the human symptoms of bird flu H5N1. Uh, particularly the different symptoms between the two genotypes of bird flu H5N1, the one that comes from cattle and the one that comes from birds, because humans have gotten infected with both of those. And we're also going to compare those symptoms to just normal human influenza, uh, the traditional one that you all think about. Um, you know, H, uh, H1N1 would be an example of kind of influenza A that is more typical for humans. So we're going to be comparing the symptoms between all these things just to give you all a better idea of, you know, what kinds of symptoms people are experiencing and how it compares to more traditional influenza. For those of you new to the channel, we just want to do a quick shout out. This is a channel of Whiteboard Medicine. We are a medical education and medical news channel. And particularly, um, if you have an interest in bird flu, we do have this playlist on all things bird flu. We'll link it in this video's description. We've been covering it for quite some time, so we've got a lot of videos on here. Um, definitely check them out if you have an interest in this type of thing. Subscribe, hit the bell button, all that good stuff. No further ado, quick 30-second break for introduction. Don't go anywhere. We will dive right in. Hey everybody and welcome to Whiteboard Medicine. We appreciate you checking out the video. Here at Whiteboard Medicine, our goal is to create medical education content for all types of interested learners. That includes videos, practice questions, study resources, and much more. We would love for you to join our community by subscribing, hit that bell button. We're also working to build a high yield Patreon page. It's going to be full of practice questions, video outlines, notes, commercial free content, and much more. None of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read this disclaimer its entirety before moving on. All right, bird flu, H5N1, human symptoms. So just a really brief bit of background, uh, and this is going to be pertinent to the human symptoms. Since 1997, there have been over 970 human cases worldwide of bird flu, H5N1. So what you might take from that is this is not a new disease necessarily. I guess it depends on um, where you rank chronologically on the scale of quote-unquote new diseases. But it's not a disease of this year. It's been around for you know close to three decades at least that we've been identifying it. It's infected almost 1,000 humans worldwide. Traditionally, the mortality rate is almost 50%. About half of people who have traditionally got this disease, humans, have died. So of the 1,000 human cases, about half of those humans unfortunately passed away from the disease. This outbreak, though, particularly the human cases that have started really since 2024, although there were some human cases before that in this outbreak, really since 2024, there have been about 67 detected human cases in the USA. The USA is seeing a lot more human cases than internationally. We did cover the international situation in a previous video. Again, check out that playlist if you're interested. But about 67 human cases in the USA since this outbreak started. Interestingly, though, the mortality has only been 1.5%. Actually, only one person of the 67 in USA that got bird flu passed away. There hasn't even been that much severe disease. Obviously, this is a good thing, but there's a huge discordance between 50% and 1.5%. So something's different now, right? Bird flu H5N1, just like any virus, mutates. And for the first time ever, we are seeing bird flu in cows, right? So it's been around since 1997, but we've never seen it jump into cows. And for the first time ever, we've seen it jump into cows. So something is different now. We're seeing it in cows. It seems like it's causing less severe disease in humans. And because of that, we wanted to dive into what symptoms this particular outbreak of bird flu is causing in humans. Because again, it seems different than the more traditional ones. So if we scroll down to symptoms, the way we're going to break this up is as follows. Um, we're going to zoom out actually just a little bit, I think, just so you can see everything. Yeah, that'll work. Um, so how we broke it up here is we broke it up by genotype. You have the D1.1, which is the bird flu genotype in birds. This is like the variant, right? Viruses mutate, so all of them are H5N1, okay? But within that, there's variants. It's like COVID-19, how there is variants, Omicron, Delta, et cetera, et cetera. One of the variants is D1.1, and this is the variant that's circulating in poultry and birds. The other variant is B3.13. This is the variant circulating in cows. And these variants do cause slightly different symptoms. And then this third column here is going to be influenza A, you know, quote unquote. The funny thing here is uh, actually bird flu is influenza A. So this is going to be what we might consider the traditional human flu. Um, uh, all these are influenza A. If you wanted to put, you know, maybe a uh, 
uh, H and N on it, you could say this is H1, N1, although there's certainly other H's and N's that are kind of traditional human flu, but this is going to be traditional influenza A. What we have over here is the most common symptoms of a bird flu overall. So the way we've broken up is symptom here, and then this is the percent frequency just in general of humans that have caught bird flu. This is from a study that was done on about 50 people who caught bird flu in this outbreak. And what you can see in general, the most common symptom is actually conjunctivitis. Conjunctivitis is redness of the eyes. A lot of people can call it quote unquote pink eye where you get redness of the whites of the eyes or the conjunctiva. And we see it in about 93% of people who have gotten bird flu during this outbreak have conjunctivitis or redness of the eyes. So this is a very common symptom. This is relevant for reasons we're gonna talk about in a little bit. The next most common symptom is feeling feverish. This does not necessarily mean you have a temperature, rather you feel feverish, chills, sweats, all that kind of stuff. And we're seeing that about 49% of people that have gotten bird flu. Headaches is the next most common in about 44% of people. Myalgias, which is muscle aches, we're seeing about 42% of people. Sore throat, 29%. Fatigue, just feeling tired, 22% of people. Cough, 18% of people. And shortness of breath, 16% of people. So this percentage of all the people that have gotten bird flu, at least of the first 50 that were studied, you see in the order of most common to least common, conjunctivitis down to fevers, headaches, muscle aches, sore throat, fatigue, cough, shortness of breath. There is more down here, so we're going to kind of zoom down so you can see all of it. There have been reports of abdominal symptoms too. Uh, maybe we'll actually zoom out just a little bit more so we can see all this in tandem. Uh, one more. Yeah, that's probably helpful. Um, okay, so uh, you can see that nausea, vomiting, diarrhea have been present as well, but they're the least common symptoms of people that have bird flu. Nausea is 13%, and then vomiting, diarrhea are both about 4%. So of all people that have gotten bird flu, this is most common symptoms down to least common symptoms. But does that differ depending on if you got bird flu from poultry from a bird who's infected with it or if you got it from a cow that's infected with it? And this is where things get a little interesting. So what we did here was we put the percent of patients who got bird flu from birds who had these symptoms. And you can see that conjunctivitis for both of them are the most common. 95% of people that got bird flu from an infected bird had a conjunctivitis, 92% that got it from an infected cow. But after that, things start to differ a little bit. So those that got it from birds were more likely to be febrile, 66% compared to 40%. Those that got bird flu from birds were a little more likely to have headaches, 55% compared to 36%. Those that got it from birds were a little more likely to have muscle aches, myalgias, 55% compared to 32%. If we keep going down, those that got it from birds were more likely to have sore throat, they're more likely to have fatigue, right, compared to 29% and 16%. Cough was more common in those that got bird flu from cows, not by much, just by a little. And shortness of breath was more common in those that got bird flu from cows. So these symptoms all, oh, no, we went one too far. These symptoms all were more common in people that got bird flu from poultry, conjunctivitis, fevers, headaches, myalgias, sore throat, fatigue. Whereas cough and shortness of breath were more common in those that got bird flu from cows. When we get to GI symptoms, this is where things actually get the most interesting because those that got bird flu from, um, from birds had a lot more GI symptoms than those that got bird flu from cows, right? So 30% of people that got bird flu from birds from poultry had nausea, 5% had vomiting, 10% had diarrhea. And those that got bird flu from cows, 0% had nausea, 4% had vomiting, and 0% had diarrhea. So GI symptoms were very uncommon in those that got bird flu from cows as compared to those that got bird flu from birds. And that's the patterns we see, right? So a little bit more shortness of breath and cough in those that got bird flu from cows, much more abdominal symptoms in those that got bird flu from poultry. And in general, a little more conjunctivitis, fevers, headaches, myalgias, sore throat, fatigue, and those that got bird flu from poultry. You know, the relevance of getting it from poultry or cows is not that robust at this point. There are some different symptoms. The one caveat is that the two severe cases, we had the unfortunate gentleman in Louisiana that passed away, the only person in the United States to have died. And then we had a really sick kid in British Columbia, Canada. Um, who got bird flu. Both of them got it from poultry, 
Both of them had this D1.1 variant, but that D1.1 variant had additional mutations, which we've talked about in previous videos. Again, check out that playlist if this is interesting to you. So it seems that of the two severe cases, they came from poultry, although the vast majority of cases from both cows and poultry have not been severe and have not caused death. So that might be the relevance of the different symptoms if we start to see people are getting more sick when they catch bird flu from poultry rather than cows. But as it stands right now, um, the disease processes seem pretty similar between the two. How does this compare to influenza A, though? So again, influenza A is also bird flu, but more traditional human influenza A. Now, it was actually much more difficult to find the prevalence of these symptoms, uh, mostly because every kind of influenza A outbreak is different, right? Because influenza A is an umbrella term, right? That umbrella term then has H blank N blank. So there's many of these, right? There's H1N1, which was the 2009 swine flu. Beyond that, there's subvariants, just like D1.1 and B3.13 or H5N1. They're subvariants. So there's multiple of these. Right? then there's multiple subvariants of each one, and all of them cause slightly different symptoms. So what we did find was a study that categorized symptoms in several hundred people that had traditional influenza A, but you gotta take all this with a grain of salt. There were some interesting things that came of it though, particularly is the fact that very few people that end up with traditional influenza A have conjunctivitis. Right, as compared to this being the most common symptom in those that got bird flu. This study that we looked at quoted 0%, although uh, highly variable. We saw some other studies that quoted anywhere from 0 to 45%, particularly in kids. But we do not see a lot of conjunctivitis in the more traditional influenza A. We do see fevers, you know, about the same, 60%, 40%, 40%. We see a lot of headaches in those with more traditional influenza A and a lot of muscle aches. Right, this is probably the most common symptom. Those of you that have had more traditional influenza, right, those muscle aches can be really significant, really severe. Um, this study showed a lot of sore throat, a lot of cough. They did not comment on fatigue. They did not comment on these symptoms either. Okay, um, But it seems like those with more traditional influenza A do not commonly get conjunctivitis and are much more likely to have kind of the myalgias, headaches, sore throat, cough, um, which many of you unfortunately are familiar with, right? These symptoms are very typical for kind of the common cold, right? They're not all that different from COVID-19 or respiratory syncytial virus, RSV. Um, the other thing we did want to mention is if you have conjunctivitis, it certainly does not mean it's bird flu. There's tons of upper respiratory viruses that can cause conjunctivitis, adenovirus, is a big one. So this is not to say that if you have conjunctivitis, it means you have bird flu at all. Um, but if you had conjunctivitis and you tested positive for influenza A, and that influenza A was not subtyped to be one of the traditional influenza A viruses, you know, maybe that's something to think about. Um, but not to say that if you have conjunctivitis, it's bird flu. Hopefully that was interesting. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Uh, we're certainly following along as all this evolves. So subscribe, hit the bell button, check out that playlist, check out our Patreon page. Uh, we're doing a lot of posting on our Patreon page and we want to really grow that community. So definitely check that out as well. Uh, in any case, stay well, keep learning. We'll see you all next time.